What up? Rob here of Cool Things with Rob, a YouTube channel where we look at cool things. Today, we're going to go back to the Southeastern Railway Museum to look at not trains, but we're going to check out the celebration of the authentic car show, as in real vintage cars, most being pre-World War II or before, some way before. Here's Greg Wells to tell us more. Well, this event is a different kind of car show. Rob, it's for authentic cars, 48 and older. No hot rods, no modifieds, no customs, no modern high performance or, or muscle cars. Uh, those kind of cars these days do not get their own shows and they tend not to come out for shows that are largely more modern or hot rods or modified cars. So these are just the real deal. We're not talking modified slicks and little exactly. goose coupe and all that kind no, of stuff. No uh, Chevy V8 under the hood of a pre-war car. No. These cars are history. They're not somebody's interpretation or craftsmanship, maybe on an old framework. And that's what makes them special. These kinds of cars these days, you will not see them unless you go to a museum. This is a 1935 Rolls-Royce Phantom II Continental. These cars were uh, actually designed to be owner-driver cars, contrary to most Rolls-Royces of the period, which were chauffeur-driven. These were actually intended for the owner who wanted to drive his car himself. As these were supposed to be high-performance models, uh, they're pretty austere inside the idea was to save weight and so these unlike the formal cars these don't have the partitions with the built-in liquor cabinets and all the <laughs> fancy things these have thin back lightweight bucket seats um, the idea again was to keep weight down okay and the vents here are those manual yes oh, okay yeah <laughs> not much electronics on these cars <laughs> Oh boy, look at the size of those tires. It's hard to, unless you're here, it's hard to really get a gauge on how big the tires used to be mm -hmm. and how wide the wheelbase is. This is a uh, 1948 Mercury 8. Back then the V8s were just uh, becoming a marketing sensation, so. Uh, that's what they called it. It was a Mercury 8. This has been uh, restored with the original appointments. Kind of smells like Grandma's house. <laughs> they got to keep uh, keep the mice out of it. Yeah. Wow. They don't make dashboards like this anymore. Of course, this is the uh, the trunk, and uh, they came with a. A uh, toolbox back then, because we didn't have AAA back in '48. <laughs> so you had to have a spare tire and a jack and some tools. This trunk is about the size of the passenger compartment, so that's something they don't do anymore. We have a 1929 Model A Ford yellow cab, taxi cab. It is an original taxi cab. Ford made 5,000 of this special body to be sold to the taxi companies. This car has been restored almost 45 years. My dad and I finished it in 1977. It's been shown at that time in the Antique Automobile Club of America as a national first prize winner. It's also a senior winner, preservation winner. It's been on the cover of the Model A Ford News, the Model A Restorers Club, uh, the Antique Automobile Club uh, back in the 70s. Um, it hasn't been used much since then. It's got less than 1,500 miles on it, but we brought it out today here because of this great show they've put together. Um, the body is different than any other Model A. Uh, this is a similar car here, but if you look, this window is seven inches longer. So it's what makes it unusual. This quarter panel and this door are unique to this car. No other car in the Model A world had this, these two things. This door is, is, uh, has the molding of a, of a two-door sedan and it's all metal. That car right there, the, the, the substructure of that door is all wood. 
Oh, wow. And this one is all metal. Um, so they were built for durability. Uh, of course, it has a dome light, uh, the jump seat, and then a partition to give privacy between the, the cab driver and the, the passengers. Of course. Uh, it has a window that can roll up and down in case you want to talk to them. It is very comfortable and very quiet back in this back seat. Um, the driver, not so much. They were probably relatively small back in the day. It has a one seat leather seat in here in the front and there's no such thing as lumbar support there. <laughs> uh, but uh, it has the original Pittsburgh taxi meter, which is original to this period. Uh, my dad bought this car in 1967 in Chicago, Illinois. It's got the original Uga horn. Can we hear that? Yeah, let's see. <laughs> Have it. <laughs> That's so cool. They all uh, they all sound a little different. And what do we have here? So this is our 1942 Ford GPW. It's the World War II Army Jeep. Most people associate Willis with the World War II Army Jeep. And although Willis did get the contract, yeah. they could not keep up with production. So, so of the 620,000 Jeeps built during World War II, Willis made approximately 340,000 and Ford assembled 280,000. But Henry Ford wanted the average GI to know they were always riding in a Ford. Yes. So every nut, every bolt, every part on a Ford assembled GPW is marked with a script F. Oh. <laughs> They wanted the vehicle to weigh less than 2,000 pounds, which they never quite got to, but they were close at 2,300 pounds. They wanted it to be very square in shape, no big fenders overhanging, so that it could fit into the conventional gliders of the day for transport. Oh, is that right? Like uh, V-Day type invasion gliders? Yep, yep. The windshields had to fold down so that they could be made very boxy. They were shipped from the factory without the spare tire and without the jerry can that you see in the back. Those were put on out, out in the field. The gas tank is exactly where you'd want it to be riding into combat <laughs> underneath the driver's seat. Well, and that's how you had to fill the tank. Is it true this was General Eisenhower's personal vehicle? Uh, this particular one <laughs> is not. Uh, General Eisenhower had a uh, 42 Packard Clipper as his staff car at Chafe headquarters in England. A lot of people may tell you, well, this one saw service or this one was on the beach at Normandy. No vehicles came back from Europe. Oh, uh, we didn't bring our dead soldiers back because of transport and refrigeration problems, including Patton. If you died in Germany, you were buried in Germany. We didn't bring back our $500 Jeeps. So it's only a one position key that energizes the coil and then there's a foot starter switch on the floor next to the gas pedal. So you would depress this with your foot uh, if it was choked and I think we're hot enough to run and cross your fingers and you got all six volts. We'll see if it'll kick over. Okay. Oh wow, it's quiet. I've got 18 of these uh, out at the motor pool in Winston between World War II, uh, Korea, and Vietnam. Um, once you learn how to work on them, they're kind of like eating peanuts. Uh, so you've got 18 of these? Got 18 Jeeps, trailers, uh, military vehicles. I've wow, got four cool. up at a museum in Clarksville, on the Miles Through Time Museum, and I've got the rest down being restored, being worked on, or being driven in parades. What do we have here? Uh, this is a 1934 Packard Dual Cal Sport Phaeton. Wow. What you know, type of person would own this type of well, car? Well, this car is a very rare car. Uh, it was not in the brochure. Uh, this had to be custom built from the factory. This is supposedly one of only eight left. Oh my goodness. Uh, people, generally wealthy people, would buy this car to put on their estates to tour guests with. A convertible has roll-up glass windows. This has no windows. It has no windows? No, no glass windows. It's got a little canvas snap in. Oh, wow. But generally, if you're Harvey Firestone, and you have a mansion at the Hamptons, you custom order this car, and when your guests arrive, this top's generally down. This windscreen's folded down. 
Oh, look at that windshield back there. So oh my goodness. You lift up the steel cowl, hence dual cowling. Seat your guest, puts this back down, anchor it. Uh, oh, so you can tour them. It's only for touring people around. Nice. The most beautiful dashes I've ever seen. This all original? Yeah. Wow. And tell me about the transmission. It's a three Ford speeds, one reverse. Um, pretty heavy transmission. Car is a. It's not easy to drive. It takes a lot of muscle. It's all manual, right? Yes. Well, the brakes are somewhat assisted. Oh, they are. Yeah, it has great brakes, but it has a 60-foot turning radius. <laughs> well, it's just a piece of art. <clears throat> this is the carburetor side. The two sides are very different, actually. Wow. This is called a Super 8, straight 8. Straight 8. And there's the factory tag. Nice. That was delivered to Washington, D.C. It knew. But it was built in Detroit, right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is the headlights. This is an option. Driving lamps connected to the steering column. So as you turn the wheel, these turn. Oh, so these turn with the wheel. That's yeah. really cool. Kind of like a tucker. This car it was powerful for the day. It was 145 horsepower. Wow. Double that in torque. It was 290 feet of torque. Wow. So much so that when these cars were just old cars, this chassis, a lot of people convert them to tow trucks. Oh, really? Because of the torque. I cannot imagine this thing as a well, tow truck. Well, maybe not this one, but again, uh, a less, Packard's, uh, yeah, less, a less model. Yeah. So there you go. You gotta admit, all those cars are pretty damn cool and still driving and not ones you'd see at your everyday weekend car show. So like and subscribe to the channel and get the hell out there and find something cool yourself.